mic They might not get their facts right, but that's alright It's only the news Read all about it! Read all about it! It's Sunday Papers! Coming to you from Portland, Oregon and Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of news hey, coming from the Happy South Happy Sunday. Week. You covering the South for us this week, Mike? He's come out on Sunday. Oh, I didn't answer the. Oh, I didn't answer the YouTube. I was a little. Rem- I was a little out of it this week. I didn't answer the YouTube comments. Yes, with, I noticed with my that. code name or with my real name. Yeah, I went in and cleaned up your mess. Did you? Yeah, I answered them all. I've been kind of killing it in there. I uh, I take no prisoners, so I li- I like doing it. That's great, and I know man that of the, the people. people love to hear from you. Man of the people, exactly. <laughs> man of the people. That's man not who how avoids I think people. Of you. Man who avoids people. <laughs> That's check, the thing check, about check, us check, is you check. know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, YouTubers and podcasters that are men of the people. We are not. You are. Am I? Well, it depends. No, you're you're really good at fan engagement. Is that a man of the people? I don't know. No, I just think we're not like, uh, you know, Johnny fucking lunch pal. You know, it's like you're oh, that you're in West yeah, Palm Beach. I'm not Beach. a Joe Plummer. I'm not a Joe yeah, Plummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not at all. But we can play one. We're both good at playing one. I uh, I was a man. You know, I kind of acted like a man of the people because, you know, we're getting I, I would have been self-conscious even younger. But now, especially uh, that we're around this age. So I had wood delivered, right? And this guy came, you know, pick up, and he's like, you know, I'm in Tennessee. This guy's a man of the wood. And yeah. uh, and so, you know, and I'm like, I'm bonding with this fucking, and we're both unloading his truck, you know, uh, with this like half quarter wood. And so- You wearing gloves? Meanwhile, it wasn't a half quarter wood. No, I didn't wear gloves. Either did he. Uh, it's a rick of wood. So first of all, thank God I studied up and I, I had never even heard of a rick of wood. So uh, anyway, uh, we're doing it and he's like, uh, we start talking, he's like, I'm going to a concert tonight. He's like, I'm so psyched. He's like, I'm going to go like, you know, right from here to my buddy's house. So they're seeing Billy Strings is playing the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville tonight. And this city's going crazy over it. Now, you saw Billy Strings in New Orleans last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were raving about it. Yeah, he played from 9 to 1.30 in the morning. And and Pink Floyd covers and all that stuff. Yeah, it's great. But um, he's just, you know, really positive. And uh, I think he was, he did Theo Vaughn's podcast. And he, and that scored a lot of points, I guess. Did you feel, did it make you feel kind of like cool that you were relating to this guy who was kind of a real man, not like you? Yeah, well, you know, in the garage, I was like, uh, "Don't go in there. I'm dressing. I'm dressing deer. I'm dressing venison. <laughs> I'm uh, whoa, is dressing the right verb? I don't know what verb I should. I'm try. They're trust. I'm gonna trust them, and then I'm gonna dry them. I'm drying venison in the gar- yeah. in the garage. Don't go in there. Meanwhile, it's really like mantra candles and uh, an Al Anon daily meditations no, no, it, book. No, I'm, this is the garage of a designer. It the whole thing looks like yeah. there's 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 con, there's vases. I for listeners, I just held up a very crazy vase that you get maybe in a museum. Yeah. And uh and it's f- furniture and all this incredibly delicate fan me, the least delicate thing in there although it's very delicate in a way is like a slab of marble which is almost masculine. Yeah. But it no guy orders that unless he's told to. Let's be real. Yeah, I'm in Portland where every guy is either like the manliest man, lager type guy, or a complete pussy. <laughs> There's so much androgyny here that it's crazy. Like everybody at the hotel I met, every single person, you could play a game show called Man or Woman. Or I don't think they would identify as either. I really think, and I'm not saying this in a judgmental way. I celebrate it. I think absolutely, look, you're a young person and you want to explore gender a little bit and fucking, you know, roll around in the other waters a little bit. That's great. I think it's expressive. I think it's creative. Great. But it is fucking crazy how, how much of it is here. Yeah. Oh, no, no doubt at all. Uh I'm looking what else you asked me. I always forget to jot down the funny things that happen, but I've had a, a good amount of Ben Hoffman time down here. Oh, that's work, good. We're, yeah. We're working on something. Uh-huh. So I had to meet me 
and this is uh, sounds completely douchey, but anyway, we had to work on stuff, so we went. We met at the Soho House, and he got there a few minutes before me, and he's like, uh, "In hotel lobby, uh, when you go in, take a left. Sitting here like a Jew who doesn't belong." <laughs> <laughs> Was there a lot of working class guys? A lot of a lot of men of the earth there at the Soho house? You know what it is? They know where to shop for the men of the earth clothes. Yes, you know? they do. That's what they know. Kind of probably a little similar to some of the Portland guys. No, but, there's uh, like there there's like used clothing stores where you can buy, you know, red wing boots that are already worn down and car hard yeah. overalls that are already have paint on them. Um Earlier, they, they possess the souls of men who lived real lives. Yeah, right. Exactly. They have a little of that. Uh, earlier, when we said, "All right, let's meet there," he's like, uh, "I got accepted in the Soho House, but and his wife uh, got rejected, so I wasn't allowed to join." And then he goes, "I didn't really have an argument to quote. Would you really join a place that wouldn't accept me as a member? I mean, I did, but I didn't say it." <laughs> Is that it's true? As if he, paid he got them, let like, in let and she in. did it. Don't let her in. That's crazy. No, no, they didn't apply together. I know, but that's weird that he can't join because she can't get in. I think I changed his mind on that. In fact, he stopped at the desk on the way out because I'm like, "What do you mean you'll bring her like all the time?" And also, once you're in, if you want to get her in, what uh, like what are they going to do? Say, "Huh?" So financially speaking, that's your household would pay double. Okay, sure. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um, I uh, I did the Ad- Adam Carolla. He brought me on his 15th anniversary episode of his podcast. Wow. And they were going through some stats from over 15 years, how many hours he'd done, how many weeks he'd done. And then they said the most frequent guest with 96 appearances was me. No. Yes. Isn't that fucking crazy? Wow. And uh, I, I don't know. It's crazy because our politics could not be more opposite. But it it literally... And we used to get into politics a little bit. And uh, now we just don't. Now I think we just kind of avoid it because the chasm is so great. And uh, so we don't really mix it up as far as politics. But I still think the guy is like one of the most prolific, creative... Um, really truly funny people and and just really a great broadcaster um yeah I going on but uh but here's what's crazy about me if i can talk about me for a second sure as i had a half empty room on thursday night at my show i've been huh. on i've been on his show 96 times i've been on stern over 50 times i've been on rogan 23 times what the fuck what the fuck with what? I mean, why aren't I like a big star? Like everybody, all the young comics think, oh, if I could just get a break, if I could just get on Corolla, if I could just get on Rogan, just one time. And it's like, I don't know. Doesn't always take. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people like that. And then people have seen you and, uh, and you're, you're, I bet there's a lot of people our age who the same thing happens. Yeah. Right. You know, of course, you, you've stacked up those numbers, but those began when you were in your 20s. Yeah, I've spread them out. Spread them out thin. No, no, no. No one would ever. He'd never have. He, like, the proof is he hasn't had anybody with equal amount of shows even recently. You know, like. Yeah. By definition, they have to be spread out. Right. 90? How many appearances? 96. Jeez. Yeah. That's, that's crazy yeah, amount. I know. And and I get paid ten thousand dollars every time I go on. So like, if you add it up, you're lying. I hope I get paid zero. Right. <laughs> and if you add that up, it's crazy. Doesn't take long to add that up. Yeah, I know. Um, also, can I tell you? Here's a great story. This happened yesterday. I uh, Thursday night I get here. I sleep on a pillow that was like concrete, and I wake up and my neck is like I can't even straighten my neck. It hurts so much. Can't get any work done. So uh, there's a massage place next door to the hotel. So I call the number from outside, and the woman says, uh, "I said, can I make an appointment?" She goes, uh, "Yes, I have appointment four o'clock." 
And I said, uh, "Oh, she's uh, Irish." I said, "Okay, I'll take that." <laughs> she goes, uh, "She goes, uh, okay, therapist is a uh, blind, but she see little bit." <laughs> I said, "Absolutely, yes." Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a great story, which it turned out to be. So I go to the place, and it's like an office building, and I I have to press an intercom. And then they they buzz me in, and I have to take the elevator up to the second floor. And you come out of the elevator, and it's just corporate. It doesn't. There's no flowers. There's no Buddha with a fucking you know distilled water and tea. None of that shit. Just hard floor. And and then she just takes me into one of these rooms. And first of all, she's standing in the hallway, and she's just facing me. And I walk towards her, and I get closer, and I was like, Evelyn. She's like, Yeah. And then she turns around and she walks me down the hallway, but she's walking with like a, a wide, she's got a wide gait, like, but like, 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 like duck footed, you know, where her toes are sticking out to the side. She's about four foot 11 and she's big and she's, uh, she's this walking is the like a blind woman. Yeah. And she's walking like a waddle. And I realize, and I think, why the fuck is she waddling? And I realize because then her toes will touch if she if she's walking into a wall. It's like her, her whiskers. Her, it's her whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a cat. A cat knows what it can fit through because of its whiskers. So she brings me into the room and she goes, "Okay, uh, take a. Uh, I'm going to leave the room. You take off your clothes and then uh, I'll be back in a few minutes." And I was just like. I, I don't think you have to do that. I think you're good. I think you can stay in the room. You can't fucking see That's me. That's right. Yeah. So, so she leaves and then she comes back and uh, and she's rubbing me and it's literally the worst massage I've ever had in my life. She just keeps pouring oil all over me like and just rubbing it around with the softest, no pressure, weird. Yeah. And, and then at one point, I'm not making this up. She had her elbow down on the table next to my shoulder and was applying pressure to the table. <laughs> and she's like, okay, roll on your back. You're like, I'm on my back. <laughs> oh, it was so fucking weird. Well, she's never read any of her bad reviews. <laughs> she, I mean, how is she going to improve? <laughs> I left her. My neck hurt worse than before. <laughs> Meanwhile, you walk in to this pitch black room lay down and she's like okay just relax and she hits the light switch and the lights go on really bright she thinks they're off <laughs> and then she had a and then she goes and she goes oh hold on let me go get my uh let me go get my um what did she call it? Uh, let me go get my tool Dog. so I don't wear my fingers out. And she comes back with like, remember those clubs you used to put on your steering wheel in the eighties? It was like yeah. a big metal and she's fucking sticking it into my neck and rubbing it around. I was Whoa. like, Hey, how about some fingers, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then at the end I paid her and I paid her cash, which she kind of went like, Oh, and so she, cause I, I didn't, I didn't think about it. Like she can't see. So she's holding the bills up to her eyes, like an inch from her eyes and moving them back and forth. You're like, Don't worry. Those are fifties and you quickly leave. <laughs> oh my God. Here's a $20 tip. Zoom out the door. <laughs> Here's a $20 tip or a coupon to a car wash. I'm not sure which. <laughs> that is not a monopoly man's face on the dollar. Mickey Mouse. Oh, God. That is really funny. Yeah, that was a fucking good one. Um, and then what else? All right, let's get to it. The logo this week comes from Matt A. I don't know what A stands for, but kind of a, a. cool one. I love I love it when they make you the woman. I know. Look at me. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of put together, huh? You got a nice rack and a beautiful pearl necklace. They usually go together. The don't haircut they? really needs. I think I might have been. I'm recovering from chemo. I think yes. maybe. Yes. Yeah. And I look like I'm Chinese. Um. Yeah, there is something weird going on there. Yeah. <clears throat> not uh, that Chinese is weird, but it's weird for Greg. It's not weird at all. It's actually the least weird race because I think there's more. Are there more Chinese or more Indian in the world? I think Chinese. Well, here's one way to look at it. They're both Asian. Uh, Denman said Indian. 
There's more Indian than Chinese. Well, Chinese I didn't f- help themselves with that uh, one child rule. Oh, that's right. That's right. Or maybe they did help themselves, but not in the race to overpopulate. No. A lot of I think uh, they're doing away with it, or maybe they have already done away with it. They did do away with it uh, because of the incel issues going on over there. So you also know that, I don't know if it's still the leading guess on how humans will go extinct, but it's the... Uh, I don't know. And I don't know. God, I should really be more qualified to talk about anything, but uh, it's like depopulation or the, you know, we're, we're not producing enough uh, children. And so we will go out with a whimper. Uh, Wait, and who I, are the United States? The world. Oh, the world. Re- oh, it, I thought it, we had too many people. No. Oh. Wait, did wait, Greg? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, Demon, you know, by put the, oh, that back Chris, up. Chris, you can leave your stuff up, by the way. It said Demon just wrote, Demon's sharp today. He's on shit. Yeah. Uh, India is projected to reach 1.4 billion people, overtaking China for the first time since the 1950. Uh, Damn. Demon, I don't know what, especially, I don't know what search engine you use. Some, it was probably the one that goes right to Q. But if you could look up what I'm babbling about, which is the, the lack human race goes extinct because not enough reproduction. Wow. Let's get oh, to yeah, some truth. fucking Check, check it on truth social. Exactly. Well, there's way too many abortions. Yeah. I mean, I, Elon does talk about it, but, but uh, because he's just taking from the biggest thinkers. Yeah. Well, like everything, like everything he does. I have a whole theory about, about the population and in, that rich people in this country control the laws and they are outlawing abortion. Meanwhile, there's a revolution brewing. Poor people are pissed. They can't get health insurance. They're seeing the, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. And there's a revolution coming. And guess what? The Republicans, they can get abortions. They have always been able to. They always will. So they're thinning their ranks as they force poor people to have more and more kids. And eventually those kids are going to grow up, revolt, and kill, ironically, kill the people that were forced to make them get born in the first place. I mean, you're already seeing it in Los Angeles and and, and other cities. Well, Portland, the one you're in probably. But um, it's it doesn't, and Carlin talked about this, it doesn't take much for people to realize, oh, if we just all walked outside, we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah. We could... Stop rich people in their cars, take them out, punch them, kill them, whatever, yeah. whatever. Like, and police, and at a certain saturation point, police will run for the hills and definitely run back to protect their families. Yeah. Happened and in Rome. I get hints of that when I see, like, yeah, here's 20 people who are just like, yeah, we're just going in and taking everything from this Nordstrom's. Right, right. <laughs> like, Flash mobs. We have no fear of the police showing up or anything. Right, right, right. All right. Now it happened, that's how ancient Rome fell. So here it is, rate, oh, Nordstrom's on, on the Aqueduct Avenue, the, the big Nordstrom's in Rome. Uh, rate, <laughs> we need a rate of 2.1 offspring, I, I think, is required for replacement fertility rate. Uh, and everywhere besides Africa is below that currently. Africa is interesting, though, because I think Africa uh, probably is leading in some of the mortality car- categories, like just getting to your thirties, I bet is a rough road in many places in Africa. Anyway. Yeah. 2.1. 2.1. I mean, does that mean per person? Like if you're married, does that mean you have to come up with 4.2 between you or is it per couple? No, I think, I think it's per couple. Huh? I believe that's a great question though. Okay. Uh, we got some corrections from last week. JJ said you kept calling a square on one of those gambling grids for the Super Bowl a box. I have never heard anybody calling it a box. It's always called a square. Um, there's nothing wrong with calling it a box. It is a box. It's just that we always call them squares. Um, he I, might be right. I've always called it a box. I've always called it a box also. And then maybe because I love the little thing I used to yell, which was, to make games exciting, back when we were growing up in our 20s and 30s, the Super Bowls were usually incredibly lopsided and boring. Unlike, you know, this recent decade. Anyway, 
Um, so to make it exciting, I treated the grid like Wall Street. So I would, you know, see, I would go, all right, they're probably going to score a touchdown on this one. And then if they scored a field goal, let me look up the squares or whatever and find who has three and six. And then if it, especially I would hope it would be a woman and then I'd offer her money for her box. <laughs> you would offer a woman money for her box? Is yes. that legal? I'm like, I will give you 10 bucks for your box, which is the most anyone's <laughs> ever paid for it. <laughs> $10, you take it right now. You're not winning now. Two scores have to happen for you to win. No, you've, you've offered me that bet many times. your box is, let's face it, cheap. Yeah. Your box is only going to be worth less in value over time. You normally give your box away for a gin and tonic. So I'm offering you $10. Brian Malley said it's executor of a will, not executioner, unless you're actually in charge of killing your mom as opposed to (laughs) distributing her assets. (laughs) I know, but doesn't a will have to be uh, like, you have to execute it kind of like you execute a good play in football. Like I'm sure it's all related. Yeah. Ex, ex executor, executor. Yeah. But, um, no, I've been talking about it on stage and it's one of those bits that's like, I shouldn't have started doing it because now it's crushing and I could never put it on a special or do it near my mother or where she would hear it. Cause it's oh, really no. dark. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you're an executioner in the family. Yeah. Uh, tour dates coming up, Huntington Beach at the Rec Room on March 1st, La Jolla Comedy Store, March 8th through 10th, Hollywood Improv, St. Patty's Day, March 16th. You going to be there, Mike? I think I am. I love it. Uh, I got to write some material. Boca Raton, Maybe Florida. Maybe this is population bit. I originally said the date was March 3rd. Is I made a mistake. It's actually April 3rd. Misner Park in Boca Raton. Tampa, Side Splitters, April 4th through 6th. And then Mamaronic, New York at the Emelin Theater on May 31st. Come on. Yeah, we're going to get all our Westchester friends to come out. Oh, that's very cool. You got anyone left left in Eastchester? Uh, no, no, no. God, no. And I'm just trying to think in Westchester even. Well, we got uh, Val, Pete Scott's sister Val, yes. twin sister. She, I already invited her. And uh, I guess my, you know, my sister and her family, they'll all come out. Right. You got some, we got some BU folks right over the Connecticut border. Oh, right. We'll invite Which Ted and George very, down. Oh yeah. Very close to Mamaronic. Maybe get John Sorelli to come up from Jersey. Hey, how about that thing I sent you and uh, Dan? I should have put Sorelli on there. That rabbi who looked exactly like Sorelli that telling crazy. jokes. Crazy. Our friend John Sorelli, which by the way, I don't know his Instagram, but if you could find John C E R I L L I, he has the most rich life, especially if you like sports. This dude, like you I just talked watched, about him before. I mean, he shows up to opening day with a vintage jersey of that team that he paid I don't know how much for. And, I mean, he goes to every museum, sports-related. He's gotten really into music over the years. Well, he's always been really into music. But, like, an incredible Instagram if you see all the shit that this guy does. Wow, he was first to it. His Instagram handle is just his last name, Cirilli. It's that's how it's spelled. C E R I L L I. Give him a shout. Give him a follow. He's a great dude. Yeah. If you want to see him, look at him in his dumb. What is this? A New York Rangers hat. But there he is. MetLife Stadium. I was just going to say, I bet you he was at that. I bet you he was at that MetLife game because they they do this outdoor tournament now. So it was the Islanders against the Rangers and it went into overtime. It was a fucking great game. And the Rangers ended up winning it. And that's his team. Yep. Oh, oh he, okay. Uh, for the record, I was there for all five that were held out there. Wow. Yep. I mean, I can't imagine. I watched the game and you're looking at these people. It's fucking February in New York and they're sitting, you know, in nosebleed seats watching a puck that's the size of your fist. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, where is and he? the best part was there's this player for uh, the Islanders. He's a rookie. He's 20, he's 20 years old. 
and he's six foot six, uh, 235 pounds, and he walks on. He's not even a defenseman. He's a wing, and he comes on, and he's, he's a tough kid. Before they drop, this is his first NHL game in his life, and he walks on, and he's at the he's at the at the circle for the face off, and before they drop the puck, he drops his gloves and beats the shit out of one of the uh, Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is in Seattle, and he has a Mariners jersey and hat on. Like, yeah. What? Yep. What are you talking about? Yeah. Or no, he's in New York with. Mariner, I don't know what the, I don't know. You have to figure out some of them. He has an amazing baseball card and memorabilia collection. Yeah, probably. So he's very ex- into that stuff. Babe Ruth signed balls, all that stuff. No, I, I don't know what his his worth is. I don't even want to say anything more about it because I don't want to put him. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Don't, please don't take his jerseys. He Because yeah. he wears them for warmth also. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, listen, speaking of warmth, oh my God, you want to feel the warmth of saving money. On an average, it takes about, th- the ba- support for Sunday Papers comes from Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 30. list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way for you to save money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile right now. Mint Mobile has wireless plans starting at 15, I repeat, $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15. Uh, You could be saving, I mean, I don't know. I think I spend, for four of us, like $200 a month. No, way more than that. How about after the AT&T debacle this week? What happened? Oh, it was like front page news. They had outages and oh. there was rumors that it was a maybe a terrorist hacking or something like that. But it was no everyone because there's a lot of AT&T folk down here, I learned, and everyone was like rip shit. Well, it's not going to happen with Mint Mobile because they are on the nation's largest 5G network. Uh, it's premium. It's high speed data. And uh, it, it's just... It's great whether you're buying for yourself or a family. It, it, you can start family start at just two lines. You can use your own phone with your same number with all your existing contacts, and they'll give you the first three months of premium wireless service starting at just fifteen bucks a month. So, get to get your new wireless plan for just fifteen bucks a month, and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash papers. That's mintmobile.com slash papers. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash papers. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. And then we got our folks who you know I love talking about over at Game Time. The well, Sunday Papers can... is supported by Game Time. Oh, okay. Is that, you say is that, that. You that's what I'm supposed to say? say? That. Yeah, you got to always say that. Sunday papers is supported by game time. That's why I'm going to talk about them. But I, I might talk about them anyway. Um, you're never going to have a frustrating ticket experience again, which we've all had those. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy your tickets. Fast, easy. It has sports, music, shows, everything. I like the discover button right there because then I see kind of what's in town. Like, for instance, if I didn't run into my firewood guy, there is the listing. Billy Strings tonight. 730 Bridgestone. Right now they're at 149. They're going to drop. That's the whole idea. Game time. Last minute tickets, flash deals. They have zone deals. Uh, They have views from all the seats in the venue for every event in your area. The lowest price guarantee. There's event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Um, that's so pretty great. insane because that theater holds 20, the arena holds 20,000 people and he's getting an average of 150 bucks a ticket. That's $3 million at the gate. He has a big band. He spreads it around. I'll tell you Damn. that. Damn. Yeah. Uh, we got predators down here. Let's see what other music I'll press the music category. Colton Moore. Hey, look at this guy, Enrique Iglesias. He's touring, man. I see him in the LA on the LA Game Time app too. Green Day. That's going to be a big one. That's a summer a tour. 
Not a, really. I know I'm supposed to be, uh, but I just find them to be contrived. I, I think it's the fact that they were called punk always bothered me. Right. That did buy, bother a lot of people. Um, and I get that, I guess. Oh, James McMurtry. I remember that guy. There's Kenny Wayne Shepard. Both of those are today. Um, anyway, yeah. it's a great uh, app to do that. Like, it's better than the other apps where um, it is frustrating. And one of my favorite things about it, I'm not even reading this. One of my favorite things about it is that the price is all in. The price that you see very unlike the other uh, apps where it's like, oh man, that looks like a deal. Oh, sorry, that's half the price of what it'll actually be. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PAPERS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code P A P E R S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right. Uh, we got some paper to crinkle. What do we got? Let me tell you. Let me let me work on that. I do. I do. Here it comes right now. Here it comes. It's coming out of a notebook. Uh, my notebook I use. I don't know if we've got it. I'm teaching now, and uh, it turns out I just joined another union, or the union joined me. Oh, teachers at USC are going the way of NYU and many others. And of all unions, the United Auto Workers Union has stepped in to negotiate for us. Wow. Front page. Nice. Front page. I'm a serial cheater. I want Musk's, Musk's, Musk's Nutra. We're going to start again. I'm a serial cheater. I want Musk's Neuralink brain chip to stop me being unfaithful. That's a quote from a guy. A self confessed cheating addict has caused a stir online after he asked social media users whether Elon Musk's controversial, controversial Neuralink brain chip would stop him from being unfaithful. The implant, which so far has been tested on monkeys <laughs> and was recently put into its first human test subject, has already had its fair share of controversy despite not yet being available for public use. According to Musk, Neuralink will initially be used to help patients with physical disabilities, but the ex-boss hopes one day the device can help people with mental health conditions such as depression and addiction. Well, of course they're going to have depression. They're going to be feeling bad about all the murders they're committing for the government. <laughs> That's what the chip's going to do. Yes. It can do anything. It just, you just get a joystick, lots of options. I have a feeling that the tests on monkeys haven't been about, uh, being faithful yet. I doubt those results are going to come back like this guy thinks. I don't think, or even just, uh, the no masturbation test. <laughs> I don't think the monkeys are going to pass that. Right. I don't care how many, I don't care if their whole brain is chips. It's yeah. a giant hard drive. Yeah. It's a hard drive. All right. And that hard drive is not going to go away. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying yeah. masturbation is cheating? Cause I well, am just, a philanderer. Well, that's right. True. I guess what I'm saying is the uh, self-discipline. Right. To right. curb your maybe sexual appetite or what you do with it. Uh, I blame on. women. I blame women. I got to go Muslim on this one. Put them in burqas, cover them up, and we won't have a problem. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And change my likes on TikTok. <laughs> it's so um, it's so awkward sometimes. I'm not a perv, but like, you know, I do. I guess I linger on some of these like, you know, women in braless T-shirts doing jumping jacks. I, I must, maybe I look at those a little bit, but then I'm laying in bed looking at my TikTok at night and my wife will gaze over and in between like, you know, fat chicks falling off rope swings, there'll be like, uh, you know, some really S Suzanne Summers kind of shit happening. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What does Suzanne Summers shit happening mean? Oh, you never saw that the, there's a clip of her dancing with no bra on with, uh, oh on three's company and it's one of the sexiest things i've ever seen i i think it you forget that i had you do jumping jacks a few weeks ago and i think the algorithm heard that yes I also mean, it hurt speaking, our listenership 
into your yeah you were huffing and puffing for a long time yeah. i stand by i stand by jumping jacks though anyway back to this thing test um i think it's cool guys will always be able to blame cheating on this damn chip honey it's not working <laughs> yeah yeah it's not I, me yeah I just put myself in neutral to see what happened, and the chip's supposed to take over. I didn't know I would be out four nights in a row. Honey, craziest thing. I'm driving home in the in the uh, Tesla, and it took a right-hand turn. I didn't program it. Drove me right to a whorehouse. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm fucking everybody. <laughs> Wouldn't stop. It was crazy. Uh, two, um, all right. Is this yours? Dick, Dickie sent this next story to us. Dickie. And, and it's it's it, I then Googled it and I found two kind of I'll say versions of the story, but it's a very popular story Two, uh, I shouldn't even read the headline. I'll read the first sentence. A man who received a heart transplant 12 years ago and later married the donor's widow died the same way that the donor did. A self-inflicted gunshot wound. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Graham wow. was this the guy, the guy who received the heart. He was the director of the Heritage Golf Tournament in Sea Pines. He was on the verge of congestive, congestive heart failure in 95 when he got a call that a heart was available in Charleston. The heart was from Terry, who, who shot himself. Grateful for his new heart, Graham began writing letters to the donor's family to thank them. And in January of 97, he met the donor's widow, Cheryl, who was then 28. He was 33 in Charleston. Um, so the story goes on for a while. And well, do we want to get our jokes in before I go? Well, over to I'm just getting, I mean, I don't know. Will they donate the heart again? Um, I'm guessing nobody's getting a skull implant from either of these guys. That's a <laughs> brain implant's probably not happening. It's like a heartbreaker. Like, but it's the heart who's breaking the people. <laughs> yes, right. yeah. yeah. The heart, listen, the heart, the stupid heart wants what the stupid heart wants. Yeah. I, I love that, you know, may, maybe this is the next guy. Donate the heart again. Her dating app is called Ticker. She yeah. shows up at the hospital. She shows up at the next guy's hospital room with a cooler. It's got the heart <laughs> and a bottle of Chardonnay. And just sign this uh, prenup. You don't have to read the details. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to accumulate um, a lot of money lately. Okay. So when I Googled this story, I then found uh, same exact type of story at CBS, NBC. Fine. The Daily Mail. Here. Word for word is the headline. How tyrant wife drove two of her five husbands to suicide after one was transplanted with the heart of the other and after spending all their cash on a lavish lifestyle. <laughs> Whoa, the Guardian? The suicides of Cheryl Graham's husbands seem an affair of the heart. One shot himself in the head and his heart was donated to another man. Then 10 years later, Cheryl married the man with the new heart and he shot himself in the head. But I uh, always thought of the guardian as kind of like a dry academic news source. Wasn't it? No, this is the daily mail. Oh, you said the guardian. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think you did. Did I? Wow. I came up with that. I'm impressed. I came up with that on my own. Then on even when I was reading daily mail, uh, Headlines around the world ask, had history repeated itself through the single heart shared by the two men? Was there such a thing as cellular memory? Did the lonely heart carry a suicide gene? <laughs> but yesterday, a less romantic reason for the tragic deaths emerged when it was revealed that police are still probing at least one of the suicides. Cheryl Graham, they said, had been married five times and had driven all her husbands to despair. She's a tyrant, said prison officer John Johnson, one of her surviving spouses. <laughs> and Whoa. it goes on that she yeah, is a killer, so to speak. Damn. Yeah. It's like, you know, in the old days, she could pull off another five weddings. But now there's this thing called Google might hold her up a little bit. Yeah. 
Well, it's almost like she's like a Kevorkian list. Like, I listen, I want to, I'm not doing well. I want to get on her list because I yeah. know it's almost yeah. a guaranteed death. All right. Um, they're, looking at, they're looking at her Facebook profile. It's like, why are half the pictures she's wearing a black veil? This seems, uh, is that her thing? I hope that heart is still going. So, I mean, he shot himself in the head. Like, and obviously that works out very well for the heart. That's how he got it. But I wonder if there's, tra do, do they say that there's trauma from something like that that can maybe get into the uh, DNA of the other organ? I don't know. I've heard that in terms of uh, lineage, like, you know. Like Holocaust could... survivors. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they oh, say that Holocaust, the children of Holocaust survivors have shown uh, PTSD. Well, maybe because their fucking parents won't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm not blaming them. Yeah. I can't talk about like, you know, when I had a shitty apartment at one point in New York. <laughs> I think I would be talking a lot about my Holocaust surviving. Yeah. I mean, but if I you're think there's a lot of guilt, right? Famously. Yeah. Famously, yeah. there's a lot of guilt, uh, guilt by the survivor. Yeah. Survivor guilt. Yeah. Is this you, Missouri teacher? Or is that me? That's you, pal. A Missouri teacher of the year started the suspicious fire that killed her four young kids. Oh, this Jesus. Is a, this is a dark episode. Happy Sunday, everybody. It killed her four young kids just hours after she posted on social media about living, quote, each day like it's your last, cops say. Bernadine Bertie Prusner and her children all perished in the blaze at their home in Ferguson. Uh, St. Louis County Police ruled it a murder-suicide. It is believed that Bernadine intentionally set a mattress on fire. Uh, a note was left stating Bernadine's intentions to take her life and the lives of her children. Um, a few hours before the fire broke out, uh, around 4.30 a.m., she posted about her children on Facebook. Wow. I don't know if she said live every day like your last. I think it was like, I'm living and today is my last day. Yeah. maybe That she's, might have been what was posted. Maybe she's Russian and the translation came out a little funny. Yeah. Um, kids, it's time for bed. Did you treat today like it's your last? All of a sudden, the kids are asking to go on sleepovers. Hey, mom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. She starts treating them differently. Told them it was okay if they started smoking. <laughs> um, she catches them saying their prayers before bed. No, you know what? You can skip that tonight. Skip that tonight. No need. No need for that. Yeah. By the way, is it me or is this a pretty easy case to solve when you find the note? Like, what was the crime scene like? Like, Captain, I found a note. Put the note down. Look over here. I think she fell asleep while smoking. Captain, but this note says, enough with the note. <laughs> this is a tragic accident. <laughs> I don't uh, think we have to I don't think we have to investigate anymore, sir. How did the note survive the fire? Yeah, right? Good point. Maybe she wrote it in blood, like on the floor or something. Oh. A pair of drug dealers, including one who was charged last year in the overdose death of his infant son. What? These are, I want everyone to listen to the, when I let, when he picks stories, what happens? Uh, I didn't, we actually didn't need that detail in at all. So let's just say a man was in jail and I picked alleged... a story with a woman who has three surviving husbands. That's the nice story yeah, I picked. Yeah, feel good story. Uh, anyway, allegedly tried to smuggle court documents soaked in liquid fentanyl into Rikers Island. I do Adam, like the story. Adam Camadate and Curtis Braswell were indicted on multiple drug charges this week in what Staten Island DA's office called a first of its kind case. Braswell allegedly delivered court paperwork infused with liquid fentanyl, cocaine, and PCP to Camagate, uh, the inmate at the Staten Island, uh, they, hoping that it would reach him in jail. Uh, look, I think it's better than getting cocaine that's been stuffed up somebody's ass and then having to snort that. Hey, this, this coke smell a little funny to you guys? <laughs> How about, it's like a, uh... Sure, you can use my lawyer. He's the most expensive lawyer on the planet, and you'll eventually learn why. 
Yeah. He, he has a lot of billable hours uh, and produces a lot of paperwork. And you get to keep all that paperwork. Yeah, you're going to want his paperwork. It's great. He doesn't use email. That's the great thing about this guy. Everything is hard paper. Guys in the guys in the yard are selling tabs of affidavit. Dude, I got some affidavit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the kids, it's, it's, it reminds me of like when we used to smell those mimeographs or whatever right, like right, in, in yeah. school. Like, oh my God, oh my God. That's yeah. exactly what's going on. Imagine like, rolling a joint with that paper. Oh, dude. That's this something. Is, this is going to be the new high-end Miami party drug. Just like warrants and uh, summaries. Yeah. Uh, a Long Island exterminator was arrested Thursday for allegedly filming a 19-year-old <laughs> undressing on a hidden camera he set up after getting chemicals on her clothing. Walter Rivas was hired by the teen to exterminate her apartment in Mineola that afternoon. She's 19 and she got her own apartment. He got kicked <laughs> That's out. That's what's standing out. Okay. Uh, Revis was spraying the home with a solution to get rid of pests when some of the chemicals got onto the young woman. It sounds like he's the pest. Upon a closer yeah. look, she found a cell phone inside the bucket that was on and actively recording through the hole. The victim immediately called police who came to her home and investigated the allegations. Uh, officers then arrested Revis without incident. No, I think there was an incident. They arrested yeah. him with that one incident. If you if you arrest somebody with no incident, that's false imprisonment. Well, first the police showed up, and you know they're recording everything. So then she called more police. <laughs> yeah, by the end, the house clothes is, on your harlot. The FBI's coming in, CIA. Everybody's. Yeah. Everyone's um, recording this poor woman. She got tipped off when his phone rang, and it was Bill Maher seeing if the video was ready yet. <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. This guy sounds thorough. He sprays the apartment. Then he sprays the inhabitant of the place. And then he films his work for quality control. Right. Right. Sometimes I mean, the boss boss says, how did it go? Well, let me show you how it went. Yeah. And, and look, look what I sprayed. Here you go. I sprayed a little of her. Um, I remember. Do you remember this freshman year of, of, of college? This was the move. You walk up to a girl in a bar, you lick your finger, you rub it on her sleeve, and then you go, let's get you out of those wet clothes. Do you remember that line? No, it was weird because even by then I had shame and <laughs> couldn't do something so unbelievably stupid. I loved bad pickup lines. Women fucking love them. You, you, you'd be shocked. The dumber they are, the better they work. Yeah, all those, I used to know, I mean, because they were so, you know, you've fallen from heaven, God says something, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, oh, boy, that one was particularly bad. All right, where are we going, entertainment? Let's do entertainment. Well, before you get to this story, the first one there, uh, I guess it was last night because uh, all you all you people are listening on Sunday, but we're recording this on Saturday afternoon, and we are fans of Shane Gillis, and he is hosting SNL. Congratulations, Shane! He's going to kick ass. Uh, there was a rumor that some of his monologue jokes got leaked, and that they're pretty out there. He kind of goes for it, according to this rumor. God, I hope they're not. Uh... What, people are just talking after seeing his set or something? Is he at the cellar, like, working it out? Um, either that or maybe, the, you know, he had to submit the jokes. Pro I'm sure he had to pr submit his, his monologue jokes to the producers, and then somebody maybe leaked it from SNL. But, you know, look, people know the history, uh, obviously, uh, but the, the Asian guy on the show, I forget his name. He's fucking great. He's super talented. Um, he He initially, I think... Uh, Bo and Yang. I think he might have a Oh, Chris, you blew it. You could have put any any crazy Asian sounding words in there and he would have read it. All right, go yeah. ahead. Um, so anyway, he eventually came out and said he doesn't have an issue and he sees both sides of it. He sees the freedom of the speech angle on Shane being able to say what he wants on a podcast, but he also sees that what he said was uh, hurtful to some people. Um. Yeah. Uh, 
I saw a clip on Instagram today. I think Shane was on a podcast. I don't know which one, but anyway, he was being interviewed and he said that uh, Louis CK called him and gave him advice. And he goes in the monologue, he's like, just do, you know, your jokes. Like he's like, no, no one, a lot of this audience most have never heard of you. Yeah. And, and he goes, so you gotta like, let them know who you are and do like those jokes. And he then said to Louis, yeah, but didn't you come up with like a whole new bit, you know, when you hosted Saturday Night Live? And Louis goes, yeah, but Shane, I am a way better stand up than you. <laughs> and Shane's like, fair point, Louis C.K., fair point. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, but Louis used to know. Louis, uh, maybe he did once oh, or twice, God, but Louis did. used to Are bring you kidding it. me? Louis he came to- up with crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a shame they won't have Louis back on because not only were his monologues good, he was really fucking funny. He did one of the ske- in the sketches, like there was a sketch where he was like, it was an, an Abe Lincoln sketch. Do you yes. remember that one? Yes. I um, forget the premise of it. He was at a bar. Abe was drinking yeah. at a bar. Uh, Malia Obama opted to release her first Hollywood directorial debut under a stage name. Debut? Social- debut. Debutted, uh, but social media is still blasting the former first daughter for her Nepo baby roots. The hmm. 25 year old uh, wrote and directed the short film The Heart. Uh, it debuted at the Sundance Film Festival. However, as spotted in a resurfaced clip produced by Sundance in which she describes the movie, Malia dropped her globally recognized last name and is credited on the project as Malia Ann. She studied filmmaking at Harvard and landed a job as a writer on Janine Neighbors and Donald Glover's Amazon Prime series Swarm. Uh, imagine, Jesus Christ, I've written on a lot of shows and sometimes people have status. Imagine Malia in a pitch meeting with all the other writers. She just just whispers the idea to the Secret Service agent and he just walks over and types it directly into the script. Rips the computer, the keyboard out of the writer's assistant's yeah. hands. Well, you know, this is going to be a very, very, very unpopular thing to say. But having been on the hiring side of things, I will say an intelligent woman like her coming out of Harvard, I'd say she didn't need as much of the Nepo thing as I think her critics are are saying. Woman Uh, like her? What does that mean? Woman like her? It's weird you heard that part. Uh, what I'm saying is there has been a, a famously uh, famously imbalanced uh, you know workforce uh, in Hollywood and not enough diversity. And so to remedy that, I mean, the pendulum really overcorrected. And I mean, I was on the part where it's like, hey, these three positions and these are phone calls because they cannot legally put it in writing where a giant company is telling me like these three positions must be because listen, in a good way, they have their eyes on diversity and they're, and they're keeping score because other people are keeping score also. And it's the right thing to do. So I think she would have, but also here's a more important question. What could Malia have done where she would not have gotten like, she's a Nepo baby, no matter what. Right. Yeah. I mean, I she mean, went into social work and had a high, you know, and and, and I guess they're saying she might have skipped she, some, she's gotten fav, favoritism? Well, yeah. I mean, usually if you want to be a writer, you have to be an assistant first, but it's going to be awkward to have your assistant who has an assistant. Yeah. I mean, no, but some writers uh, skip the assistant thing. I mean, I did, but I mean, uh, many do if they have a great, pack it and all that stuff yeah all right well i wish her luck i mean she's actually an amazing woman what is chris she... saying about colin jost oh, here and we bj go. novak uh colin jost why were they they're harvard people i don't know that they're nepo babies well colin's a woman from harvard she's saying they were super young and got hired uh, right out of right college. out of right away out of, yeah i guess when you come out of harvard there's a fast track from Harvard, especially if you worked on the Lampoon, 
There into... was a bit of a backlash against that because they were so annoying in Hollywood and, and, and everywhere. It was like you went from the Lampoon to the Simpsons, then to everywhere else. Yeah. So anyway, good luck to her. It was the Conan route. Make America Florida. Let's get a crinkle. Okay. Florida doctors pull 150 live parasites from a man's nose. Somehow I was able to keep reading this article. When the on-call, bad luck that day, uh, Dr. David Carlson examined the patient's nose. He noticed something moving in the patient's nasal cavity. After getting a camera to look inside, the doctor found dozens of living pests just living in the man's sinuses, feeding off of him. Size-wise, there's variations, he said, but the larger ones were as big as the end of my pinky. I knew he was in big trouble. There was erosion that was occurring near the skull base in very close proximity to his eye and his brain. Jesus. It had gotten so bad that the larvae had burrowed into other tissues inside his head. In total, 150 of these creatures were pulled from the patient's head with different methods, Whoa. according to the doctor. What? Damn. End of his, first of all, how big of a nose are we talking about here? Yeah. The, and the I, slightest itch on my nose. And I'm not, listen, I, you've never seen me in a, ever complain about allergies, complain about being bothered by pollen, nothing. But I do know if I get a tiny itch in my nose, I rub it to the point where my nose almost calls off, falls off my face. Like, I'm oh, like yeah. what, the, what was that? Cause sometimes I'm like, you feel something move inside. And it's probably the drying of something, but I'm like, Whoa. And I just, I just rub it till I'm like, I killed whatever that was. No, it feels amazing. I, I have it. I have kind of a recurring right below my left nostril, a, an itch that I constantly scratch, which, you know, at this age, those kinds of things are only going to get worse as you get older. <laughs> and that's going to be my thing. But, um, and that's why I pick my nose almost constantly. Uh, <laughs> there is very rarely snot in my nose that's not getting picked out while I'm at a red light. <laughs> I thought you were saying restaurant. No, I go to the restroom for that. They all begin with RE. How does this guy not notice? Are you guys, you guys smell anything funny like a kind of a fungusy larva type of an odor? Anybody smell that? Anyone smell my brains being digested? <laughs> no? They don't really talk about how it started. I mean, is it a bacteria? Uh, I guess oh, larva. Oh, no, they did. Sorry, I read the article. They did. He, I forgot what his first guess was. And then he goes, I'm also an avid fisherman. And so I do handle dead fish a lot. Oh, wow. But the article didn't say, well, that's it. And I forgot what else he did. I don't know if he had a cold. I forget what it was. I think he had a bad cold also at one point. I don't know. But nothing explains this. Also, the size of them sounds like it was almost whack-a-mole. Like they were yeah. popping out of his nostrils and the doctor was right. trying to get them out like, uh, you know, groundhogs out of holes. All right. All right. Uh, all so right, what's disgusting. This, next one? this, one's this one's just as crazy. It's crazy, but not as creepy. So keep listening, people. You don't have to fast Maybe forward. Maybe you should skim through this one a little bit. A Florida little man chops off paraplegic friend's feet with a hatchet in an insurance scam. All right. I don't really need to read it for you, but the police show up and uh, they pretended that it was a brush hog, which is a rotary mower, and they pretended it was an accident and that the feet were cut off. But it didn't seem right, and the authorities were guessing um, that uh, something was amiss. The, the, the cut was too clean, and also he had tourniquets on his leg, and they're like, who did that? They, like, you weren't <laughs> alone. Right, right. And uh, the man, a known paraplegic in his 60s, like had those tourniquets. So the authorities discovered that a visitor from Florida had journeyed to the small Ozarks town with a hatchet executing like an executor, an elaborate plan to commit insurance fraud. 
Uh, they summed it up. It was a poorly executed plan. Uh, the wounds were far from convincing. The cuts were unnaturally clean, lacking the gruesome mess one would expect. And as far as the missing feet, a relative eventually discovered them hidden in a bucket obscured by tires. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Oh my God! Look at this pair of sneakers in the bucket. Huh? Yeah. Wait a minute. Nothing unusual here in the Ozarks. Just some human feet in a bucket. That's all. Also, he could have played dumb. He's a paraplegic. He didn't. He didn't. Feed. Oh my God! You're right. Where did they go? Yeah. Where are right. my feet? No, that's the thing. Is like he wasn't using them anyway. It's like trimming a dying hedge. Like. Just pare it down. Wouldn't his life be easier without these appendages that are useless? Also, I'm the claims uh, guy from insurance. I'm like, okay, so what's your claim? Like, how have you been hurt by this? Right, right. <laughs> what were you able to do yesterday that you can't do today? <laughs> how did the Florida guy get the hatchet all the way to the Ozarks? Can you can you take that on uh, TSA? You take that Do you TSA? need to bring a hatchet to the Ozarks? I think oh, they have plenty true. of them. Yeah, yeah, I was using one today, yeah, trying to be you, all if, manly. If you're a oh, if you're a Florida man, though, you bring a hatchet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. That's yeah. part of that's that's part of the whole image. No, I was trying to cut kindling off this, and what I discovered off my back to my wood talk, I think this wood might be wetter, still more moist than what I think I paid for it. Anyway, they probably knew I was a Yankee. Rip me off. Are we going international? Let's go international around the world. All right, this is your story. I like it. No, Why I think you, it was my story. Yeah, it's your story. Go ahead. Munich. Uh, a new study suggests that apes possess a sense of humor just like humans an international team had discovered that four species of great apes, orangutans, chimpanzees, is it bonobos, bonobos, and gorillas, all engage in playful teasing with one another. I mean, we, this is like, uh, the old joke used to be like, this is published, published in the Journal of the Obvious. You know, like it's, yeah. we all, we've seen them in zoos. They play jokes on each other. Right, right. This behavior identified by cognitive biologists and primatologists mirrors human joking in its provocative, persistent nature, incorporating elements of surprise and play. The finding, findings indicate that all four great ape species engage in this playful teasing, leading the research team to propose that the foundational elements of humor may have evolved in the human lineage at least 13 million years ago. Damn. Too soon. Too Whoa. soon. The apes are like, okay, two humans walk into a bar. Two homo well, sapiens walk into a bar. This was in Munich, Germany, by the way. I, to everyone there, the apes were funnier than anyone in Germany. So right. that threw off. You, you have to, you, there's no controlled experiment here. You have, yeah. to, you have to factor that in. And the Germans are like, they're throwing poop. Wait, that's funny. I thought that was sexy. Did you see <laughs> it's making the rounds on Instagram? There was an interview. Uh, it was first I've seen it talked about. And then I actually saw Robin Williams interviewed about it. He was in Germany on one of their giant shows. And they do have those giant shows where like Tom Cruise rides in on a motorcycle when he's promoting the international, you know, uh, screenings of, uh, of, of whatever it is, Top Gun and, uh, and Mission Impossible. Anyway, he's on one of these big ones and she's getting along with him gloriously and is dying laughing and then asks... You know, why do you think it is uh, that there that Germany is not known and hasn't produced that many funny people? And he goes, well, did you ever think you might have killed all the funny people? <laughs> <laughs> and it did not go well. And I think he was never invited back on that wow. show, which is a very popular stop for everybody to make. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Chimps, I get it. Chimps are hilarious. They, I mean, you could stand in a chimp cage all day and they do funny shit. But orangutans, total hacks. <laughs> the throwing the poop bits, like a hundred years old. 
Never laughed at a gorilla. <laughs> The gorillas, I don't know. The gorillas, I wonder how like, advanced. I don't know. I was gonna shit on a comedian and say he was like a gorilla, but I, I don't. Why do? Why start being that guy at this point? Yeah, I mean, even the even the chimps aren't uh, stooping to that level. They're not shitting on each other. Well, they literally oh, they are, are, but literally. not figuratively yeah. doing right. that yet. No, of uh, course they're funny. Are you kidding me? I've seen them annoy each other on purpose, like sneak up and like. Touch the, oh, did you see the one where the, the male is poking the female yes. and she swats him and then he pokes her again and she swats him? My wife sent me that twice. And and the male, though, wasn't it like a younger, it was smaller. So in a weird way, they were punching up also. Like the yeah. humor was in, this thing could kill me, but I'm going to annoy it, you know? I literally, every single night, and this is the key to humor in a marriage, is you have to do it constantly. Every single night, she lays in bed, she opens her book. She reads about four pages. It makes her drowsy. She turns off her light, rolls over with her back to me, and I proceed to give her credit cards. You know what a credit card is when you run your finger up the ass crack and poke I, her in the I armpits. I was unaware of that. She hates being poked in the armpits um, just a- until she's swatting at me, and, uh, and, and, and it wakes her up. Like for all the work she's done to get drunk, <laughs> now she can't fall asleep and I and she gets really angry and I don't know why I can't stop doing it. 20 some odd years of rejected credit card swipes. <laughs> <laughs> Your credit is no good there. Your I mean, haven't you denied. learned? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I also like you're still swiping your credit card. The only person alive still doing that. <laughs> I know I should be putting the chip in. That might, you should that be might putting be more the chip fun. in. Yeah. yeah. Or tap it. Tap that ass. We are going to science, tech, and health. Here we go. All right. This is you. I skim through this a little. Oh, this is I'd me? say, well, oh, I yeah. can do it if you want, because uh, Alabama yeah, my, my is right is down going, the road so from you me. do it, and I got two All shows right. tonight, and I got to hang out with my friend Brian Van Horn. Van, Vanny. Before the show. Uh... I like Van Halen. He sh- did he ever have that logo? Did he ever use that logo? On no, he always notebooks? did the Doors logo. Oh, weirdo. Yeah. Um, and my voice is sounding pretty strong today, actually, for me. But Alabama's right down the road. And this, I did not realize how this abortion news, I thought they just put it up to a vote. And it's more interesting than that. So the Alabama Supreme Court ruled Friday that dozens that sorry that frozen embryos are children which pro choice rights groups have warned could have dangerous implications for fertility treatments such as in vitro fertilization so the alabama supreme court on friday they reversed a mobile county circuit court judge who seems to be rational in my opinion uh judge jill parish uh she decided to Dismiss this lawsuit. What was the lawsuit? A couple sued an Alabama fertility clinic for the wrongful death of their frozen embryos. Um, the couple's frozen embryos were destroyed after a hospital patient who accessed the freezer and held the embryos, dropped them on the floor. Uh, the ruling means that the couple can sue for wrongful death. So my take is this couple, I think, was probably super pissed off all that stuff. And we're probably trying to get compensated for this hospital messing up their frozen embryos. And to do that, they probably got legal advice. Like let's go at them this angle that we can get them in the wrongful death. So the wrongful death of a minor act is sweeping and unqualified. It applies to all children born and unborn without limitation, the ruling said. It is not, and this is what the Supreme Court said, it is not the role of this court to craft a new limitation. Anyway, the Supreme Court's like, no, you don't throw that out. That court had merit, that that case had merit, and then they are saying that, uh, yes, indeed, it uh, it was the wrongful death of a minor, the frozen embryos. That so, is, this is a slippery slope. Yes, I mean, what's next? I can't toss out my spank tissues. Am I going to get arrested for what's in my trash bin here at the Holiday Inn in fucking Portland? How about the hospital patient the next day? Like, uh, listen, good news and bad news. The uh, 
your tumor is actually, it's not grown anymore. That's good. But you are going to be on trial for killing eight children. Remember when you dropped that tray yesterday when you shouldn't have been in there? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you're a murderer. And by the way, uh, good luck in prison having killed eight children. (laughs) That doesn't go well. Right, right. I kill millions every time I was alone in my office on a Wednesday afternoon with a script deadline. (laughs) I was Hitler. Imagine him trying to talk his way out of all the rapes in pr- in prison. Like, yeah. uh, no, no, they were they were frozen. Every- Shut up, you kid killer! You froze the children first. You froze them. <laughs> what a creep! <laughs> um, all right, let's get to this day in history. Yes, here we do it. Very fun. We changed the format of this. It is now a quiz where Mike tells us the event and I tell him the year that it happened off the top of my head. Sometimes. Sometimes it's a birth. Sometimes it's stuff like that. Okay. This was my, well, I don't want to give it away, but you know, this is my first job out of college was related to this. So on, on this day, in what year? Did Philippine President Ferdinand e. Marcos, under pressure from the Ferdinandi? United States, Ferdinand Ferdinand E. Marcos? Oh, okay. I like Ferdinand. E. I thought it's you had playful. a little nickname for him, like you guys were close. I would have called him Ferdy. Yeah. Uh, fled his country for Hawaii after a fraudulent Hawaii? electoral victory. Oh boy. Uh, and Corazon Aquino uh, replaced him. What on this day in what year? I'm going to say 91. I told you it was my, oh, that's interesting. You're right. I it, it wasn't my first job. At, that would have been out of high school. It was 86. 86. You had a better oh, okay. guess based on wow. my clue. Yeah. Okay. Well, what happened is she was president for a while and then it took a long time. And then the Marcoses were on trial in New York city and I got a job, um, uh, for the the Aquino government literally maintaining Imelda's poor image in the United States. Okay, what else is going on? You're not going to know that one. You're not going to know. Well, would you know on this day in what year did French painter Renoir, Pierre Renoir, when he was born, give or take 70 years? Wait, his name was Renoir Renoir? No, Pierre Auguste Renoir. Oh. Renoir. Okay, what year the was Renoir? What year was Renoir born? I'm going to say 1821. 1841. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, yeah. dude. I gave you 70 years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Known at the time as Cassius Clay, became the world heavyweight champion by knocking out Sonny Liston in seven rounds. What year? This would have been 1959. Uh, No, that's I would have known that was too early. 64. No. Okay. Uh. That was the famous photo where he had like his arm going across while he stood over him and he was down on the on the canvas. I believe so. I believe I mean that's not the photo they have here. Uh, I don't know how many times they fought, but I think so. I think that okay. was it. And I don't know if that's the one where uh, the, I know we drive people crazy when we talk about sports, but there was one where I think it might have been Sonny Liston, but one of them put an irritant on his gloves and oh no shit and Ali couldn't see and was complaining about it in the oh, quarter oh wow and there used to be real shady shit like that that it was you know harder to detect or was ignored back then yeah and they would do stuff like that um George Harrison it's his birthday what year was he born uh 1942 very close 43 the youngest beetle right. yeah he was the youngest you uh, we always talk about the the traveling wilburys and how young everybody was he was only 39 years old i think when he was in the traveling wilburys it's it's 
ridiculous. Yeah. Even today, literally this morning, I saw a uh, something come across my feed and where it was Ringo being interviewed. He's like, yeah. So there I was like 30 and the Beatles were behind me. <laughs> yeah. And he was the, he was the oldest one, I think. All right. All right. All right, let me see if I can find one more. I mean, those were the lead ones, I got to tell you, but uh, you're not going to know. All right, yeah, why not? The 16th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution happened on this day, which permitted a federal income tax. Sorry, it went into effect on this day. What year do you think that was? Nineteen. I'm already impressed. Nineteen. I'm thinking it's FDR, so I'm gonna say 1941. No, nine. They needed the. They needed the do re mi before then, especially. It's so ironic. Like after we leave England because of taxes, then we're like, okay, 1913. Everyone's getting a federal tax. Yeah. 1913, that's when it 19, was? 1913. Huh. Here's one. I think you're going to do very well on this. It's tomorrow. I'm cheating, but it's the lead story from this day in history for February 26th. What year was Napoleon's escape from Elba? Oh. I'm going to say... Uh... He escaped his exile. I'm going to say 18. And, and he got, didn't he escape twice or no? Yes. He went twice. Yes. Well, he gathered. So I'll, I'll finish reading some No, details. he didn't escape twice. He was sent, he escaped, oh. and then he got sent back. Okay. Yeah, he gathered support. Oh, no, they, then he sent them to a further island. First, he was sent to Elba, escaped, came back, amassed an army, got back in power, and then got sent to a, an island off of Africa. It was like the furthest most point from land in the world. Anthrax and he died there. Island. Anthrax Island. <laughs> no, that's that um, was uh, Hannibal to oh, Clarice. I'm going to say 18... 23. 15. 18, 15. Okay. Okay, my man, uh, where are we now? We are... We are at... Obituary? Let's do an obituary. Let's take it down. And that's all, folks. Look what I found. Here's the good news. Other than Navalny, did we talk? I think we talked about him last week. Well, his body was returned to his mom... And then one headline I saw was his tortured body. I don't know if, I mean, I, I don't know if that means physically. I, I pro, who knows anyway, but uh, other than him, it wasn't many famous deaths. Uh, at least one that I found, but I did find that Tony Ganios dies and he was the guy meat from Porky's. <laughs> oh, wow. Remember him? Yep, of course. 64. He was an actor who made his film debut in uh, The Wanderers, which was amazing. And he played an audience favorite, Anthony Meat Tuparello, in the 1980s Porky's sex comedy franchise. And he died in New York uh, after surgery. By the way, they call it a sex comedy franchise. Go back and watch Porky's. There is a fucking neo-Nazi. There is abortion. There is a suicide. It is a dark-ass movie. And there's uh, Cottrell from Sex in the City. Oh, Kim Cottrell, yeah. Being sexy as hell and and and, and feigning an orgasm or having an orgasm, I think. A real, no, like, you know, like... really having it, yeah. In the uh, locker room, I guess. Yep. Um, let's see here. He was hospitalized Saturday with a spinal cord infection and he had it operated on. He passed away Sunday of heart failure. Huh? In 1990s, Die Hard 2, he played a killer who meets a memorably gruesome end when Bruce Willis stabs him in the eye with an icicle, but he found his signature role in Porky's. Uh, it was a hit in 19, a surprise hit in 1981 
get this. The reason I put this paragraph in here, it's about a group of high school boys in Florida looking to lose their virginity in 1950s era uh, Florida. Um, it was savaged by critics and it would go on to be the fifth highest grossing movie of 1982 spawning, huh. spawning two sequels. Did you, I'm trying to remember if, I don't even think I saw that in the theaters. I think I did. Yeah. I rewatch it because the, like the, uh, the peephole scene was, I think it was a huge stunt and that's what got everybody to the theater. I remember that there was the 30th anniversary and I was interviewing somebody from the movie. So they sent me like the box set of the Porky's remastered. And I was shocked how dark the movie was. I mean, yeah. a lot of those 80s movies, you know, late 70s, early 80s movies, you took like Saturday Night Fever. Like you kind of remember it as like a, a fun, upbeat movie. It's fucking dark. Yeah. The movies back then, especially the 70s, they were not afraid to be very real. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you had like Midnight Cowboy rated X won the best picture Oscar. Wow. Yeah. You had Taxi Driver. I mean, the best movies in the world at that time, you know, at least American ones were very dark. Yeah. The uh, Easy Rider. Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah. That, that was a bummer. It's still amazing. Oh. I watched, I, I think I told you, I sometimes do this. It's like, I'm done with whatever I'm doing or I finished a movie. And there's not much time left in a flight. I'm like, I got 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And also I'll watch it while we're finding the gate. And I did it once. I remember telling you, I did it once with Black Hawk Down. Holy crap. I just went to the scene where they're like, we got to go in. And just it begins with the helicopters. Yeah. Do that. Anybody, even if you're at home right now, watch that Black Hawk Down scene. Anyway, I did it with the last 20 minutes of Kramer versus Kramer. Good Lord. Is even that I'm all of a sudden I'm tearing up. That just kid was amazing. Starting then. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how about ordinary people? Yeah, I haven't read that. Days. Holy shit. That was right in our sweet spot where we were, we were starting to take movies like more seriously. And yeah. I remember that one landed hard. And there's Mary Tyler Moore in an unbelievably dramatic role. Yeah. I mean, it's the movie open. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Watch the movie if you want to. I mean, it's worth it. Uh, should Redford, we talk about Redford the fifth? Redford directed it. Should we talk about the fifth anniversary of Brody Stevens passing? Yeah, you know, and we we were really good friends with Brody, and uh, I met him really early on because Jeff Nichols, my stepbrother, uh, was trying to be a stand-up in New York, and you were already, you know, you had made it compared to these guys. These guys, you know, Brody was out hawking and trying to give away tickets to the seller out front, and anyway, uh, wound up doing, you know, a documentary series on him, uh, bef I'd say a few years before he died. And, uh, so I guess it's his fifth year anniversary. And recently someone sent around this, a uh, viral clip. Well, and let I me just say like you guys, if you and Zach produced this special and it was about Brody and it turned into a series and you guys were there like on the ground, watching him go through his struggles and, you know, sort of helping him fight for his life as you were also trying to get this project done. Well, yeah, what happened was it was going to be like Gervais has his like flunky guy who Carl Pilkington and I love Carl. And basically it was like Gervais thought that guy was the funniest guy like in the world. So, you know, that was our pitch to HBO kind of was I would watch a show of the quirky guy that Zach Galifianakis thought was the funniest guy he had ever like uh, w w which is also impossible to explain how and why Brody's funny, you know? And so he had given Brody roles in Hangover 1, Hangover 2, cut out of funny people, as he famously would tell you, but he was also in that road trip movie that Zach did. And, um, and so Zach's trying to get him to his next level, and we sold the documentary as like, here's a guy that the top guy in comedy right now is trying to show the rest of the world how funny he is and it's not really working out. That's what we're going to follow. Yeah. And then we did the pilot and it was picked up and then Brody uh, had a manic episode. That's literally how you describe it and how the medical community described it. 
and they learn, and it's a very, very popular misdiagnosis. They learned he wasn't depressed. He was bipolar. And because he was diagnosed as depressed, it only protect him from the low end of things. And there was no kind of regulator protecting him from mania. And a lot of people find out they're bipolar because they go into mania when they're just on depression drugs. Anyway, what happened was we got handed a way better series to do because now we're not following this the guy around, you know, like trying to make it on reality shows. It is now about mental health. It is about, you know, Brody coming out of a 17 days at the UCLA psych ward and trying to find equilibrium in order for him then, you know, to continue his career and everything. So it turned yeah. out great. It was super heavy. And, um, you know, I think it was a good, I think it was a good eye opening show about what, cause especially as a comedian, people just, they don't understand what the psyche is and not all comedians have the same psyche, but there is a certain slice of, of, of our population that is afflicted with either depression or bipolar. And, um, and I think it was, I think it was meaningful that I think that oh. show was really something. Yeah, no, I, I, it's why I think it's the thing I'm proudest of. It's, uh, and again, it was, we were handed that, serious storyline um so anyway recently a thing went viral where uh in, in theory i guess uh and it's been debunked maybe guys put together a new hour by george carlin and ai studied george carlin in theory anyway it was thought provoking even if it turned out to be false because uh, one idea was could we bring back brody um, who, who sadly committed suicide five years ago. And um, is there a way like we could do that, like bring him back? Like what would he be saying now and all that stuff? And I recall, and I think it is the very first line of Enjoy It, the series that we did originally on HBO and then it moved to Comedy Central and got a second season. But I think his first line in the famous Brody Cadence was... Um, Feeling good about life. And it occurs to me, no human being would ever say that. Like, so already it was right. almost like he was a, that's what AI would say. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy. All right. Let's cheer up. I think that was funny. All right. Here we go. Let's go to the funnies. <laughs> All right, so Hagger is with his boys. They got the, the the swords are up, the shields are up. They're getting ready to fucking pillage, baby. Mm -hmm. And so Hagger says to the boys, I need a volunteer to lead the battle charge. Lucky, of all people, raises his hand and says, I'll do it. And one of the guys goes, you're a braver man than I. And then Lucky goes, not really. I have a huge crush on a nurse at the hospital. And there's a little <laughs> thought cloud with this pretty nurse. And she's got a couple of hearts, heart emojis next to her smiling face and i just think does she know what's coming does she there those should not be hearts those should be like asterisks and yes. uh you know th it should be like it's oh the poor girl jesus lucky yeah i don't lucky. think it's love i don't think love is in no the air. no abduction right. is in the air um uh, now yeah. we got the lock horns and uh Leroy is dressed like he's going to a Don Ho concert. He's got the Hawaiian shirt. He's got a derby. She's got almost a matching derby. She's got an oar, a boat oar in her hand. And this guy is handing Leroy one. And it says, Canard Cruise Lines. And, and Loretta goes, how cheap were these tickets? <laughs> All right. A big thank you this week to Jane, who sent in that... Uh, series that this cartoon that I forgot the name of last week. So the name of this strip is non sequitur, non hyphen sequitur comics. The first comic I guess was in 1992. Anyway, I saw one that he sent. And so what this one is, is you see this highway in the middle of nowhere and it's going over like, you know, a, I don't know what you'd call that, but it's, it's, it's like a bridge but it's on land going between over this, I don't know, like bay. Anyway, it says the evil Knievel. Did you just erase it there? The evil Knievel Memorial Highway. And you see the highway lead to a ramp 
and then a gap and then a, you know, an, a ramp that you'd land on on the other side. And it says bridge out, either stop or really speed up. <laughs> so <laughs> I liked great. it. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. That should exist. Somebody should build that somewhere. Yeah, you just have to sign some uh, waivers, and then you're off. I never get tired of the drawbridge going up and the guy in, like, a Mustang Mach 3, like, speeding up and going over the drawbridge. That's just the best. Yeah, that is strong stuff. I mean, it's really, like, the genesis of the Fast and the Furious because I've never seen those movies, but I'm kind of looking forward to, like, binging them because I hear they're so ridiculous that they're hilarious. Wait, which ones? Fast and the Furious. Oh, I know. Oh, have you I ever was seen on, one? I think I might have. No, 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 definitely not a whole one. But there was one, and I mean, have there been seven? There have been more. I think there's been at least seven. I remember tuning into one, and fans will know what I'm talking about. And these, they dropped out of pl- the cars dropped out of planes. Yeah, right. and maybe even a <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> and dropped like with with wheels spinning and then they peeled out and there's been 10 Fast and the Furious movies. But, and then they raced down a mountainside. Like, and it was, it, I'm like, yeah, clearly, I don't even know how they followed it with eight, nine, and 10, if it was seven, because it was lunacy. I think, I don't know if somebody told me this and it's not true, that they were in space. In one of the more recent ones. <laughs> I think 11 is going to be underwater, right? It yeah. has to be. Yeah. Uh, or, let's get to through, Blondie. Oh, they're going to fucking, they're going to race into a black hole in space. I like that. And then appear yeah. in a different time. Uh, so Blondie and Dagwood are in bed. He's got on, uh, well, guess Here what? Here we go. Could it happen? Donut pajamas. She's got on a pink lacy top. They've both got fucking macbooks opened up they're they're doing a little product placement for macbook here and so she says survey one do couples today talk less to each other he says i can't answer that it's way too general then she says two do couples today have fewer date nights he goes again no comment too general third one she says do more spouses refuse to cook dinner when their spouses won't answer surveys he said now that's specific can we talk yeah you can talk you can talk without fucking laptops in bed when you're when you're fucking laid down next to a woman who's probably drenched in rose oil, whose <laughs> toenails are probably painted fuchsia, whose breasts have the the are, are are full and round and soft, and yet you want to sit on a fucking laptop and take surveys? Close her fucking computer and open her legs, Dagwood. Wake up. And of course, the threat. She knows where to get them. It's with food. She's not even withholding yep. sex. Right. That wouldn't work. Yep. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Too general still. He's not even fat. That's what's so weird about it. I mean, yeah. I, I would like to see a Blondie cartoon where Dagwood weighs like 360 pounds. That would make sense. That would. Yeah. It would even be more depressing that she's sticking around, though. No, then she'd leave him. I think that would be the. That'd oh, that, it's a short, it's a short run comic. I like, yeah. okay, yeah. fine. All right. Listen, speaking of short run, <laughs> if you want to save some money on your, uh, on your mobile phone, go to mintmobile.com slash papers and, uh, you're going to get yourself, uh, your, your $15 a month. Uh, you get your first three months, whatever it is, you know, the deal. And what's the game time thing? Billy Strings, look at this. I think it was 179 when I checked on it. 149. That's why we have game time. You track it and the, the game prices time go down. App. That's it. Use code papers. All right. Uh, we want to thank Chris Denman, everybody at Midcoast Media for supporting the show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget, you can always write in at uh, Fitzdog radio at gmail.com send us your thoughts send us your songs send us your logos we love that you guys are such a big part of the show absolutely and i'll, I'll talk to you all on youtube <laughs> for the people that comment and somehow uh, ingest our show that way and uh i think it's time to take it ish. take it ish. yeah it's the sunday papers podcast with greg and mike 
might not get their facts right, but that's alright. It's only the